Well, right now we are at the Aviation Museum in Buda, and we're gonna catch our flight back to Oslo in a couple hours, which is um, right next to the um, museum here. This is part Air Force Base and part airport. Um, and someone uh, about an hour ago who has lived in Buda and different places around the world, he grew up here in Norway, um, explained it to us that the F-16s and the F-35s are taking off um, almost daily to go out to the coast because... Well, they're taking off early in the morning, so he says <laughs> that it wakes you up to a, a sitting position every morning and then you go, what? And then you remember what's going on. Um, it's kind of a reconnaissance. Um, the la he said the last five years, Norway, Sweden, this area up here has felt a difference in how Russia is acting. Yeah, but he also said that sometimes the Russian airplanes are outside of the um, yes. Norwegian airspace, which yes. um, Norway just bought 35 or 35 to 50 or something like that from the U.S. Mm. And, and not too long ago, there was a NATO training session for about a month, and so the Germans and the U.S. and um, other countries came up here, and they um, they used conferred. The, they conferred <laughs> on how to deal with all that's going on right now with Putin and the and Russia flexing their muscles. So, anything else that was well? He just said that you know, like a lot of places in the world, but especially up here, they're concerned and what Russia is thinking. So um, they are taking affirmative action, mm -hmm. which I think is great. You have to do that. You can't just sit. So um, good. This yeah. is, uh, we were told this is a nice museum, a beautiful museum. It's a knock your socks off museum. Mm -hmm. This museum is huge. We're never going to get it done. Do it the best we can. <laughs> okay. up the Buddha um, there was a, a man that came over to us he'd been talking to Keeley and he was a pilot and he heard that Dick had been one too so he brought a lot of information and pictures of the old planes he's from Norway anyway he was telling about his auntie Gitskin who started the first airplane service in northern Norway or maybe all of Norway and I do believe this is probably Gitskin mm -hmm. that's her right there yeah, and he's actually the one who suggested we come here. Anything this else? is a view along Boda Main Street after German bombing in 1940. In the fall of 1944, the entire country was burned to the ground to delay the pursuing Soviet Red Army because, of course, at that time, the Soviets were our allies. They were coming from the east. Um, half the population was forcefully evacuated south, some hid in caves, some stayed outdoors. They're all waiting for Soviet liberation. Finally, liberation came. Mm -hmm. And here's a picture of Crown Prince Olaf in Oslo, greeted by very, very jubilant Norwegians. As you can see in the background, there's all sorts of uh, different types of airplanes, old and fairly new. The um, person that we were talking to earlier and gave us information was saying that Buda during World War II had been bombed almost to rubble. Mm -hmm. That is being torn down and they're building new, well, they're new building, modern stuff. Well, they're building like new no, condos. No, they don't want the modern stuff. Yeah, they do. They, he said modern and they quite liked it. Didn't they? Oh, well, well, I, I mean, I thought, some of the houses look like old Norwegian houses, but there's also new hotels and new condos and different things. On the water. Well, yeah, usually that's true, but I think mm -hmm. some of the old city center buildings, if they go down, they're coming up older with an older style yeah. of yeah. Um, well, the main street looks older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that was what Boda was. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a modern city until it wasn't a modern city when they built it up because he said they built it up ugly. Mm -hmm. Well, that was they had to do that. They had to do it fast because there was nothing here. Mm -hmm. And 
the the gentleman who told us about the um, the F-16s and the F-35 said that he's very proud of this museum. It's a national museum. It's not just a local one. And um, I can see that people probably don't give it enough credit because we weren't going to come here um, either until I read all the reviews on it and said, we got to go. Yep. So, yeah. And Dad is super happy. Yes, and he, he said, well, I'll go if you let me. And so he's <laughs> off somewhere just, I'm sure, having a good time. operators, um, stations throughout the area. There's a lot of NATO surveillance stations yes. from Trondheim here, Tromso, and then north all the way to the border. Where you find out, you find out that the world is listening to the world. Mm-hmm. Everybody's listening to everybody. everybody. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah. All the way back to centuries and centuries ago, there was always spies mm -hmm. um, installed in another country to see what they were up to. For the f last five years, Norway has started to build up the military. <laughs> can't, can't think of That's not what we say. rehearsed. I know. <laughs> I'm so tired. It's all it's light all night long in the, <laughs> these areas. <laughs> Try to sleep. Okay. Mom didn't sleep very much last night. I woke up probably seven times going, it's light out, it's light out. Seriously, it's light out. But anyway, she slept less than me. So what this gentleman was telling us is that until five years ago, the prior five to ten years, they had really downsized their military. Yes. And then as soon as Putin came in and he, tried, he started to flex his muscle, then they have decided to build up the military again, not unlike another country that we know. So there you have it. Anything else you want to add? No, good job. All right. <laughs> So we're off to the airport now, and we mm -hmm. hope you guys um, enjoy a little bit about what we um, looked learned. at, learned, and um, what else do you have to say, Mom? Oh, we're like just it. thankful. Mm -hmm. We're thankful that we mm -hmm. had the opportunity to do all of this. Yeah, and actually the gentleman who told us on the train yesterday to come here, he's actually over there with yeah. a bunch of people. So yeah. yeah, He's a talker, but he's with a whole bunch of people, so yeah. I don't think we're going to bug him. But anyway, no. we're glad we came here. Mm -hmm. It was very informational. <laughs> we're going to Oslo now, so yeah. see you soon. We are freezing. We're sharing a jacket. She's using the little pad on the back of the seat. Because the air is coming down yeah. full force, That's and I stole Mom's pillow, and I'm sharing her sleeve. And hot coffee and tea is coming, but I don't know, it'll probably cost you 20, 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I might have to have a glass of wine to forget about my coldness. <laughs> and I don't have any, I have nothing. Hair, she has no I hair. I have no hair, it's just cold. <laughs> okay. Oh well, how are you doing, Mom? I'm doing good, simply because I'm gonna get my pillow back. Hmm. So this is day 30 of our travels. We've been on the road for 30 days, Mom and I. And it has been an awesome trip. We are yes. so, so lucky, so blessed to be able to have this experience together. Yes. And we just thought we would sit here um, on our last day when we are just kind of chilling out. And we would like to just kind of recap how we feel about our whole trip. Yeah, kind of sum it up. Once you're in the family circle um, here, then you are just in. And they also treated Lydia um, like a queen and she just thrived and she wanted to stay here but I said hey you belong with us <laughs> you gotta go home. you're coming home <clears throat> which they're already home but um, um, yeah and it was just uh, fantastic to have uh, discussions over dinner and a tea. little bit of vino and some tea a little and tea party at Tuvas. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of good, good conversation. Yes, with friends and family. Yeah, and family so. and friends are always a highlight in our lives. 
Mm -hmm. But there were many other things we saw and we did and we experienced and discovered. We're talking about the kindness of strangers. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a travel community, um, it seems like everyone kind of pays it forward towards each other. And we experienced that a lot from other people. Yes. And we were able to help other people too. But I love the community of travelers because everyone's willing to just love each other. And even if it's for a fleeting moment, um, and meet new people and get different perspectives and even if you have a conversation on a train for a couple hours with someone and you never see them again mm -hmm. um, those are just very rich enriching experiences that mom and I really 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 dig we think it's cool yes you're connecting with people <clears throat> yeah and that's fun for both of us yeah so um, memories this is this is this is all about what we've done this whole trip for <laughs> not that it doesn't make any sense I'm gonna do it again <laughs> Take two. Yeah. <laughs> this trip was all about making memories. And uh, first part with Keely and I together as a mom and a daughter. Second part as my husband and her husband and her two youngest. Yeah, and the memories of showing my kids different um, historical things like the Roman ruins and different yes. things like that. And yes. I planned a lot of the Spanish trip, the, the trip in Spain, to revolve around that because I like to take the kids to different things that they can learn. To broaden their horizons, yeah. a greater understanding of yeah. the world, and not just learn things through textbooks, but like if we are able to, and we are, and we can make it happen, I like to take them to um, just different archaeological sites and museums, and you know, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you know that we're all about museums because and we like them. We yes. like to learn, and we like to show the kids, and that's uh, how we roll. We've had a great opportunity to do this, but if you can't, for whatever reasons, you know, in your own locality, there are many places to see uh, and do and teach your children about the world, museums, um, national parks, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or a lot of traveling exhibitions that might come to your town. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just think it's so important for their education mm -hmm. that they know that there's some place other than the spot that they live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, broaden, broaden one's horizons right. for sure. So. What did Mark Twain say? You know, to to travel is to um, forget. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Twain said a lot. We've been quoting I know, him a he lot said, lately. Yeah, but he said um, to, to travel is to uh, cut prejudice, but he said it much more yeah. glib than that yeah. was. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, we can look it up later, or yeah. you guys can. Yeah. Basically, the more you travel, the more you see other people's perspectives in life, and that we all are um, kind of the same. Made of the wherever same Wherever we cloth. go, really, wherever we go around the world, we're all the same. We just want to be loved. We want to belong somewhere. Home, and we want yeah. um, to We want to provide for our family. Yes. And we want well, that's what this was all about, is making memories. And we have made so many memories, and many to take back home with us. Mm -hmm. It's been really, really good for us, this one. Right? It mm -hmm. has. It has. And we hope that if you've been watching these vlogs that you've enjoyed experiencing some of the memories that we've been making. And um, we will make many, many more to come, hopefully, either in Minneapolis or beyond. beyond. So go out and make memories. Absolutely. Absolutely.